good morning, everyone. Um, it's always a privilege that uh, the Lord allows me to come up here and preach. I take it very serious because um, I know I'll be held accountable for what I say. Um, thank you, Sherman and Peggy, for allowing me to come up here and trust in me not to come up here and preach some heresy or something, you know. Um, that song that Diana, you guys came up with, it, it's amazing, the worship team we have here. Because in this life, we're going through a lot of things, a lot of struggles. A lot of people don't know what the other person's going through. And a lot of us are in testings right now of our faith. Ever since the pandemic, you've kind of seen, this is what I, I believe, a shaking that took place. You saw those that were truly his and heard his voice stay in the churches and you saw those that weren't leave the churches and I believe we're in a test in this world right now Amen. so this morning just like the prophet Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 20, 20 his word was in my heart like a burning fire shut up in my bones and I was weary of holding it back and I could not and this morning I have a word from God a message that's very timely. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this opportunity, Lord. I pray that you would empty me, Lord Jesus, that you may use me to preach this word that you've laid on my heart. I thank you for everyone in this room, Lord. I pray for those that need to hear this word, that they would be drawn to you, Lord Jesus. I pray you would calm my nerves, that I may relay this word for you. I thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So this morning, the Lord has led me to preach a message. Really, it's a warning to believers about a sin that is a sin that is the most dangerous sin a believer can fall into. I'm not here to talk about the sin of the flesh, uh, flesh such as adultery, fornication, lust, homosexuality, gambling, stealing, or drugs or alcohol abuse. I'm not here to even talk about a sin of the mind such as anger, covetousness, ambition, rebellion, rebellion, unforgiveness, slander, gossip, or even pride. In fact, this sin is far more dangerous than pride or any of these sins. And once a person falls into it, they're in danger of being hardened in that position. Most Christians don't talk about this sin and they don't take it serious, but I'm here this morning to expose this sin that I believe is running rampant, rampant in the church. It's a sin that I'm seeing people fall left and to the right, causing shipwreck in a believer's walk while running the race with Christ. I'm going to expose this sin a little bit. But first, let's get into Psalm 73. I want to read about ASAP. Asaph was a Levite. He was a chief musician in the first temple in Jerusalem. You know, and when I first got this word and the Lord had laid this on my heart, I had been asking God for the past month, um, Lord, would you lead me? Every day I get up, Lord, lead me. What am I supposed to do today, Lord? Who am I supposed to talk to, Lord? Lead me, God, lead me. And I, I, I've just been stuck on this, lead me, God. And he's led me to this psalm. And I'm like, why am I at this psalm going to preach? You know, like, it wasn't making sense to me at the time. I was doubting God. I was doubting what he was telling me to do. But he kept pressing in me. Go to Psalm 73. This is the word you have for someone on this Sunday morning. Um, Asap, he writes a couple of the psalms. I think about 11 of them in the book of Psalms. Um, they're really intriguing, and I would encourage you to read them. Um, they're, they're about all kinds of issues that you may be going through. Um, so we're going to start in Psalm 73. I'm trying to get the nerves done. I shouldn't have nerves because the Spirit of God has been at peace in me all morning long. But the enemy comes in with that soft, soft voice sometimes, and he says, doubt God. And he does. He attacks all the time. And, but I'm not going to doubt God this morning. I'm going to preach this word. This message is going to go forth. And if this is all I do the rest of my life, I'm happy with it. I can sit in the pew after this. But I want to honor God, and I want to do what he's called me to do this morning. So we'll start in verse 1, 
truly God is good to Israel, to such as are of a clean heart. I want to establish something real quick before we get into this message. God has always been good to you. When has God ever done you wrong? When has God ever led you astray? I mean, honestly, I want to establish this so you know that He is good. He is holy, He is righteous, and He knows the path in your life that you need to take. And a lot of times, like we're about to read in this psalm of Asaph, we get, in, we get in testings, we get in trials, we get in tribulations, we get in hard times, and we start doubting God. And the Holy Spirit's been pressing and pressing on me for a week now on unbelief. And I've already exposed this, and I can't hold it in. It's unbelief. We don't believe what he says to be true. We don't believe it. So I'm not going to, we're going to get in this word. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled. My steps had nearly slipped. Are you about to slip this morning in the sin of unbelief? Are you slipping in a sin in general this morning? Are you stumbling on your race, your walk with the Lord? My uh, steps had nearly slipped, for I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no pangs in their death, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men. And we see Asap here, he's going through this testing. And he's saying, other men, these wicked men, they're not in trouble like I am, God. I'm in trouble all the time. I'm struggling all the time, God. Why is it the wicked can get away with everything and I'm struggling? And we see that sin of envy, 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 envious in his heart already. He says, they are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. And Asaph is saying, like me. They're not plagued like us. They're not plagued like other Christians. Why is it? I mean, honestly... When you think about it, why can the wicked get away with everything? Why is it that we have to fast, we have to pray, we have to read the Word, we walk with the Lord, we're obedient to holiness, and they just do whatever they want to do? When you get in this, this spot and you start questioning, is when it's a dangerous spot for you. Because he's struggling. Asaph is confused here. It says, therefore pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than the heart could wish. The wicked get everything. They live their best life right now. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak lawfully. They set their mouth against the heavens. And their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore his people return here and waters of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, how does God know? And is their knowledge in the Most High? So we we can see that Asaph is clearly going through a testing of his faith right here. He's confused right now on why these things are happening, why the wicked can prosper. And a lot of times in our life, we go through testings too where we doubt God. We doubt His promises. So this morning, is your faith being tested this morning? Are you going through a test of faith? Now, I'm not talking about when you start dabbling into sin like some of you are, and the Lord comes and He disciplines you. I've been there. I've done that. I've been disciplined. That shows that you're a legitimate child of God is when you get disciplined by Him. But I'm talking about a testing where you're just sitting here minding your own business, and then all of a sudden, calamity falls on you. Tribulation, hard times. You you might lose someone in your family, a death in the family. You might start having depression out of nowhere. I mean, I've been there, done that. Just out of nowhere. Anxiety out of nowhere. Just out of nowhere. Um, And you don't know why this is happening. Why are you in this test? And your faith is being shaken this morning. Let me encourage you with one word. One more word. I have a whole bunch of words. Do not let your faith be shaken in God. 
keep your eyes fixed on Him in your testing, in your hard time, in your tribulation. Listen, we're all going through this. Either you're coming in one or you're going out of one. When I'm 70 years old, I want to be beat down because of the test that I've been put, put through in my life. If you're not going through a test right now, something's wrong with your salvation because you should be being tried every single day, it seems. In James 1, 2 through 4, it says, My brethren, count it all joy. Count it joy that you're struggling right now. And you might be looking at me like, this dude is absolutely crazy. Why would I be joyful in my uh, struggle? Why would I be joyful right now when I am being beat down and no one knows what's going on in my own mind? Listen, have joy. Have joy. Know this, that you're His child and He's going to bring you through it. And that the testing of your faith will produce patience. It will produce perseverance so that you can go on through the next test in your life. Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Listen, I don't know who lied to you, but when you become a Christian, a born-again, spirit-filled believer in Jesus Christ, it is not easy. It is a hard life. You are hit from every side daily. You are attacked daily. But let me assure you, there is peace in them attackings. There is peace every single time. We have a hope, and that hope is in Christ and Christ alone. Let me remind you this morning, Christ is still on His throne. He is still on that throne. So no matter what you're going through, no matter what is happening in your life, He is on His throne. In 1 Peter 4.12, it says, Beloved, do not think it is strange. Don't think this is strange, okay? Okay. It happens to all of us, what you're going through right now. The fiery trial which is to try you as those... Oh, I'm sorry. But rejoice to the intent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when His glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. In 1 Peter 6-7, through it says, In this you greatly rejoice, Though now for a little while, listen, the trial doesn't last forever. You'll come out of it, and then you might go back in it, but you're going to come out of this uh, testing that you're going through this morning. While if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith be a more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, it may be found to praise honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Your faith is being tested to see if it's genuine faith. You're being built up. You're being sanctified through this walk that you are walking with Jesus Christ. So, what happens when you start doubting God in your hard time, your hardship, your trial, your tribulation? It says in James 1, 6, But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. When you're going through a testing, don't doubt God. You keep your eyes fixed on Him. You keep focused on Him. Don't let that doubt... uh, give root in, in your walk with God. Because what's going to happen is you're going to fall into unbelief. It says in Proverbs 3, 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding this morning. Don't lean on your own understanding of why you're struggling, why you're going through a hard time. Your own understanding isn't the ways of the Lord. He has you in this situation for a reason. He has you in the spot that you're going through for a reason. He's going to test that faith and see if you're genuine. He's going to build that faith up to see if you're a true believer. Once again, don't let your faith be shaken this morning. Lay a hold of the promises of Jesus. He told you 
He would never leave you nor forsake you. He's not going to leave you where you're at. He's going to bring you through it, but sometimes we need to go through it. We need to be shaken. Our faith needs to be tested. And we're going to come out the other side of this, okay? I know this isn't my best theological message. Um, I struggled with God this week. And I was like, God, I can preach so much better on another issue. I, I know, know the message better. And I tried to do that because I started to doubt Him. But listen, and I even went to, the, this is a little deep, but I was like, God, why is it so hard to please You? I do what You say all the time, but why is it so hard to please You? You've got to be careful in that situation because you're about to slip. Lay a hold of the promises. He will not leave you. He's going to bring you through it, okay? Do not doubt Him this morning. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Our faith is in Jesus Christ no matter what we're going through this morning. Just because our circumstances look like they're very bad, our circumstances don't matter. What matters is Christ and running this race by faith. Is your faith in Jesus Christ this morning? Are your eyes fixed on Him? Listen, nothing's impossible with God. I've seen the Lord move in my life several times through other believers' lives several times. If you're battling something in your mind and no one else knows about it, listen to me now. There is nothing impossible with God. At the name, and the power of the name of Jesus Christ, that can leave you, you can be set free this morning from this if you want to be. He's there, He's here right now. He's here speaking to you right now. Don't reject it. Don't reject these words and harden your heart deeper because you're going to fall into a pit of unbelief. I went extremely fast this morning through my notes, and I was like, I'm going to go for about an hour, I think. And, but that's all right. Um, it's not about time. It's about getting the word out and getting the message to someone that the Lord has. And I want to be a living sacrifice to God. I want to, I want to sacrifice my time, my abilities, what I have of them, to the Lord. And a lot of people, they don't think they can come up here and preach or teach. Listen. I am the worst public speaker you have ever known. Amen. Listen. <laughs> listen. Listen. I am. And I remember someone saying, your message was really good. Uh, I think it was the last time. But maybe you should take a speech class. And I'm like, okay. Well, fair enough here. But listen. I'm not a public speaker. I'm a preacher of the gospel. Amen. I preach the word. I deliver the word. And I'm obedient to Christ to give you the word and the message the Lord has. These public speakers need to be kicked out of these churches. That's why they're lukewarm and their believers are falling out. You know, and I believe when COVID hit, I, okay, I believe when the pandemic hit, I hope we don't get kicked off YouTube for that last one. I didn't mean to say the word. Um, but listen, I believe there was a shakening that took place in the land. There was a shakening and we saw who the real sheep were. We saw the other ones fall. There's a testing taking place in this world, and many people didn't pass the test. Obviously, they're at home right now. They could be here. 99% of people could be in the house of God, but they've been deceived, and their faith has been tested by fire, and it's not genuine, and that's the truth. Hold me to it. Um, so this morning, are you slipping into unbelief? Are you slipping this morning? Just like Asaph, almost did. We're going to go back to Psalm 73, verse 13. It says, Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain. Now listen, Asaph, he's been around righteous men. He was a Levite. Okay, so he's coming from a priesthood. His father was a Levite. He was around King David. So he knows the ways of God. He knew the righteousness of God. But he's so deep in this trial right now. He's so deep in this testing of his faith. He says, surely I've cleansed my heart in vain. Have you ever been in that spot when you're like, God, 
I am doing everything right. Why am I still getting hammered? Is this all vanity? Does this even matter what we're doing here? That's where Asaph was. Are you there right now in your walk with God? What's it even matter? It says, and I've washed my hands in innocence. Innocence, I can't say it today. Uh, For all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. If I had said I will speak thus, behold, I have, would have been untrue to the generation of your children. Talking about the Israelites, how they wandered in unbelief for 40 years. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. He couldn't understand why the wicked were prospering and all these issues that he was having in his testing. So in Hebrews uh, chapter 3, verses 8 through 12, it says... Do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion in that day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works for 40 years. Therefore I was angry with that generation and I said, they always go astray in their heart. People always go astray from God still to this day. They don't believe what He says just like the Israelites. They don't believe what He says at all. And they have not known my way, so I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So can a believer fall into unbelief? Absolutely. Now this is a sin that is damning the whole world to hell, is unbelief. But as believers, you can slip into this unbelief. Like I said at the beginning of this, that sin is so dangerous. When you get that doubt seeping in and you fall into this pit of unbelief, you're just going to run wild. And you're, I don't want to say it, but I think you're going to be departing from, the God, from God. And He's going to discipline you back, I believe. But... It's a scary and fearful thing here. We, we do need to understand that there is warnings in Scripture about falling away. I'm not teaching work salvation here, but I'm teaching that you better watch, watch out. Okay? Don't test God and don't test the Scriptures. Even though we believe in eternal security, there's some warnings, though, that I would keep an eye on. Just don't even go down the road is what I would say. So this morning, are you slipping into unbelief just as the children of Israel when they stand before God? Listen, when the children of Israel stand before God, they're still going to be saying it was too hard, God. That testing you put us through, it was too hard to have faith in your promises. When you stand before God, are you going to say it was too hard, God? The testings were too hard. It was easier to go live a prosperous life like the wicked. they're still going to be saying that, and you will be too. In Romans 4, 19 through 21, it says, And not being weak in faith, we're talking about Abram, Abraham here, did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old. And the deadness of Sarah's womb, he did not waver. Abraham did not waver at the promises of God. He stood firm in them promises. And you have to stand firm in them promises too. You have to trust in Him. Even though it's hard and we do fail. But you have to keep faith and keep on fighting the good fight. Keep running the race of faith. Hebrews 12.1 Run that race of faith. Don't quit. Don't give up. And don't give in to these lies that the enemy comes in and whispers in your ear. He's a liar. He's been a liar from the beginning, just like a murderer, but he's a liar. He tries to confuse the saints. If he can get a a child of God to not believe in the promises of God, then he will cause shipwreck in that home, in that church, anywhere that person is, he will cause shipwreck. 
He did not waver at the promises of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. We're going to be strengthened in our faith when we're going through these uh, testings in our, our walk with God. We're going to be strengthened. So when the next one comes, we're going to be able to sit there and be patient. We're going to be able to be calmer. We're going to have more faith because we've seen God deliver us time and time again. And we're going to have perseverance too. That what He had promised, He was also able to perform. Listen, God will complete the work that He has started in you. He will see it to completion. It is your choice to believe them promises. So today, let me give you the remedy. If you're going through a battle right now, you're going through a testing of your faith, and you just don't think you can go on anymore, I have the answer here in this book, the Word of God, the inspired Word of God. Here it is, Psalm 73, verse 16. When I thought how to understand this, it was too painful for me. Until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. You have to go into the sanctuary of God. Not the building, but you're here this morning in the sanctuary. But you have to go into the presence of God just like Asaph did. We have to get in His presence in our testing. Because if you run to anything else during your testing of your faith, maybe it's your marriage that's breaking down right now. If you run to anyone else, anything else, you cannot run to your pastor respectfully. Me, any pastor, you cannot run to your spouse. You cannot run to your phone. You can't go Google, what do I do? Listen, you have to run to the presence of God. Get on your knees, get on your face, and seek God's face. Listen, you have to seek His face. You have to want Him with a true, genuine heart. A heart of... You, you have to know His heart. When you learn to know the heart of God and to seek His face, listen, everything changes in your walk with Him. It all changes. You start having uh, have more faith in Him because you see Him delivering you. You see your prayers being answered. You see Him work in your life. Listen, in Psalm 62, 6, it says, He only is my rock. He's the only one that's going to be your rock right now in your hard time, in your tribulation, your testing, whatever it may be. He will be your foundation. It is Christ is the foundation of our walk. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. You won't be shaken if you're walking in the presence of God. And if you're daily seeking His face, if you're daily in the Word of God seeking out these truths, you will not be shaken. I've done went through too many testings. I've went through all this. I, I know, for the most part, the enemy schemes. I know what he's done to me before. And I've seen God deliver me time and time again. So now I stand firm. And when that doubt does come in, that unbelief does come in, because it tried to attack me this week, I got on my face before God and I sought His guidance. We have to do that this morning. If you're struggling, you're going through a test, listen, God is here. He is able and He is willing to help you through your test. Now I'm not going to pray for you to get out of your test because I might be praying against the will of God. But I'm going to pray that God will give you strength to get through your test and get to the next test. Um, Psalm 73, uh, verse 28. I don't know if I put that on there, Grayson. But this is what Asaph says at the end of the psalm. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God that I may declare all your works. Seek His glory this morning if you're going through a testing. Just the name of Jesus will bring you through it. The name of Jesus will bring down strongholds in your life right now that you're battling. Sin that you're battling. Depression, anxiety, whatever it may be. His name, there's power in it. We take that for granted. 
There is power in that name. So this morning, lift up a praise to Him, a sacrifice to Him. Listen, the Lord will fight for you. He will be your stronghold. He will bring you through this this morning. Finish the race of faith this morning. Sherman. Craven about this, and I said, you know why I think Christian people are full of unbelief? Because they refuse to hear God's Word. It's about God's Word. They don't have any of God's Word in them. So when the test comes, they flunk. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, they've been taught wrongly, and they have a misconception about who God is and what He thinks about them. So when the trial comes and the test comes, they form an opinion about God that's not right. And that false teaching brings doubt and disbelief. Let me encourage you. Get in to God's Word. It's hard work, I understand. We offer to you multiple Bible studies every week that you could be a part of. We encourage you to come. I do not know, I'm just going to be honest with you, I don't know if God is just revealing more of His Word in this time because of the time we live in or if He's just revealing it more to me in the time of my life. But I'm seeing things in God's Word that I've never seen before. want to know why you struggle in unbelief. Why you're full of unbelief is because you're not full of God's Word. You can fix that. You could get to where His Word's not scary. You can't live without it. Jesus said, man cannot live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So I would encourage you. If something Traven said to you this morning, get home. Hey, you do see the doubt and have unbelief. You do have questions that God has the answer to. Seek Him. Come. Get into His Word. Let Him speak to you. Don't run from Him. How frustrating God must be to have called His children out, did one of the greatest miracles ever, period of time, and then have them run from Him. He's initiated the relationship with you. He's waiting on you. So do that. We're not going to keep you any longer. We just want to have a time of prayer. If you've never met him, we'd love to introduce you to Jesus. He can make you the Lord of your life. Everything in your world will change. Every 
everything in your eternity you change. Maybe you're here and you're sick. We want to pray with you. We're watching God just do miracle after miracle after miracle. He has miracles.